In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what a week of winter weather it's been. You know, earlier in the week, snow was piling up in, here in the northeast, in the midwest, all across that whole area. Temperatures plummeted to near record lows. Wind chills went so far below zero that if you were paying attention to the weather on the news, the meteorologists were saying that the salt brine that the local plows use wasn't going to be as effective, so you better watch it when you're out on the roads. In fact, uh, people, people weren't going out. They were maybe doing the basic things and just kind of hunkering down in their homes. If you see them, they would be out shoveling or clearing their driveways, and they didn't look like they were enjoying it. Maybe they were running to the store to get something that they needed, or simply getting from point A to point B, but people really weren't intentionally trying to go out in that cold. Now, there were a couple days of school off, too, because of the weather. But there wasn't really a whole lot of playing outside because of the bitter winter cold. Top it off, those cold winter days were still early enough in the winter that those cold winter days end pretty early. What a week it was. And then yesterday rolled around. It was neat. The snow had stopped, of course. The sun came out. The temperatures even dared to get up past zero, past 10, past 20, even up into the 30s. There was even a little bit of warmth out there. After days of, of below zero wind chills, it was positively warm. Of course, uh, people were going out. Uh, they were out in force. You go to the stores, they were, the stores were hopping, parking lots were full. People were running the errands that they hadn't had a chance to do earlier in the week because it was so cold. Or maybe they were simply gearing up for the next winter storm to come through. Either way, though, it was really neat to see people happy to be outside, happy to see the warm sun. As welcome as the sun is, especially in the part of the country like ours, as bright and warm as it can be, even in the summertime, you and I live in a world that's covered in thick darkness. Not the darkness of the night where there's no light at all. Not the darkness, not that deepest darkness of winter, but thick spiritual darkness. Darkness much more dangerous and terrifying. Darkness that blinds the eyes, that covers the ears, that poisons the heart. Yet this morning, the prophet Isaiah comes to us in Isaiah chapter 60 and tells us, you have no need to be afraid because your light has come. As I mentioned in the children's talk, the people in Isaiah's day feared the darkness of night. Imagine for a moment a world without electricity. Imagine that. All you have is that Lamps like this, or maybe a torch with some pitch that's on fire. That's all you had. That's all they had for the light at that time. Cities didn't light up the sky. You didn't have street lights. You didn't have a light pollution or whatever they call it over the really big cities. Total darkness is what they had at night. Now it was beautiful to see the stars and the moon at night, but it also made night very dangerous. When the sun set, darkness really did cover the earth. So people kept some kind of lamp or light or torch burning <coughs> to keep out the total darkness from their homes and, and the dangers of the night. How appropriate then that Isaiah describes his world and describes our world with that same kind of total darkness. See, darkness covers the earth. A thick darkness is over the people's. The Lord allowed Isaiah to look ahead and see the darkness that was coming. He allowed Isaiah to, to see that because his people were falling deeper and deeper and deeper into spiritual darkness, God's judgment was coming. Isaiah saw very dark days for the kingdom of Judah when the, empire, when the Babylonian Empire would come and destroy everything and haul everyone away into exile. They had rejected the Lord for too long. Deep darkness, dark days, was ahead for God's people. And they were ahead for God's people, but light was coming too. Now as the winter weather drags on, I want you to 
pause and take a look at people's body language you see dismal winter weather has a depressing effect on people shoulders slump people lack energy without enough sunlight they're on short days filled with snow and cold and it's very hard on people mentally and physically now imagine that times infinity that darkness that amplified in infinite times that's what this spiritual darkness is that Isaiah talks about. That's what that spiritual darkness does to us. Without Christ, the light of the world, we're walking dead. The thick darkness of lovelessness or materialism or fear or lust or pride or greed blinds your eyes, covers your ears. It makes you stumble around not knowing where you're going. Without Christ, all you can do is gratify the cravings of your sinful nature. And do what your sinful nature desires, blindly following it. We all disobey the holy will of our God. We, we deserve His punishment. Every time we disobey God, that dark terror of death also threatens to plunge us into the total darkness of eternal separation from God's love in hell. Without the light of Christ, we are lost in complete and total darkness. We live in total darkness, and we're headed for eternal darkness in hell. That fact crushes us crushes us with guilt and despair. But as I mentioned before, your light has come to shatter the thick darkness around you. Isaiah goes, tells us, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. Jesus scatters the darkness and things change. His good news lifts our heads and hearts as the glory of the Lord appears to us with grace and mercy. Because of, we are sinful by nature, His appearance at first is a terrifying thing, and rightly so. To hear the Holy One clothed in undeserved, unconditional grace draws near to bless and help and save us. You see, whenever that phrase, the glory of the Lord, is used in the Old Testament, it always describes how Christ, the light of the world, comes in grace and mercy, revealing his holy presence to deliver his people. That glory of the Lord, a free and faithful grace, was first revealed when the Lord delivered his people from 400 years of slavery in Egypt. That glory of the Lord guided them through, the, through 40 years of wandering until they came to the promised land. That glory of the Lord delivered them and when he brought delivered the exiles and brought them back from Babylon. And most importantly, that glory appeared in human flesh to deliver us and all people 700 years after Isaiah. At that time, the glory of the Lord appeared as angels re revealed the glorious good news of a Savior born in Bethlehem, the lowly shepherds. That the Lord, uh, that glory of the Lord was revealed to the Magi, when they saw the star and followed that star to Bethlehem. The glory of the Lord, as we're going to hear about next week, was revealed at Christ's baptism, when he was publicly anointed to be God's chosen one come to save. Ultimately, that glory, or that glory of the Lord was revealed later in smaller ways, when Jesus performed miracles, and when he lived a perfect life without the blindness of materialism or greed or lust or fear that we have. Jesus also revealed his glory to his disciples for a brief moment before he went to his death. But ultimately, you and I are no longer lost in the thick darkness of sin because Jesus revealed the glory of the Lord to us through the shame of the cross. On the cross, he unveiled his holy grace for all mankind by his bloody payment for sin. Jesus shattered sin's dark power over us. He then shattered the dark terror of death with his glorious resurrection from the dead, to bring us back into the wonderful light of life. His light of life. Now that's good news for you and me, who trust in Jesus as our Savior. That good news lifts our crushed spirits, gives sight to our blind eyes, and life to our dead hearts. <coughs> the light of the world has shattered the thick darkness of sin and death around us. <coughs> but how sad for those who remain without Christ. How dark and cold... It truly is for those who remain in unbelief, headed for hell. You know, we see so much darkness around us. Our world, our nation, our communities, our neighborhoods remain covered in thick spiritual darkness. Only through Jesus Christ can they have freedom from, the dark, from that darkness. 
How remarkable then that the light, your light, has come to bring his light to the hearts of all. Isaiah tells us, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the ark. When Christ revealed his glory to us, he declared us righteous, not guilty, justified is the word we use. Through the waters of holy baptism and the good news of our Savior, the Holy Spirit worked faith in our hearts and made us members of Christ's family. Now we are different members of the human family, but in Christ we are now one through faith. When God looks at you and me, he doesn't see gender or race or background. He doesn't see your social status or your family line. No, he sees beloved members of his family through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul once explained it this way. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. How often, though, don't you and I fail to rejoice in that unity? How often do you find yourself impatient with the perspectives of a brother or sister in Christ or insensitive to those around you? How often do you think, speak, or act out of ignorance and think yourself superior to those not like you? How often doesn't sin's thick darkness blind you to souls for whom Christ died? Thank God that we have a Savior who didn't think like that. He wasn't like that. But instead, He cared for every single sinful soul, including yours and mine. This Savior was the one about whom David sang, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your tra or our, has he removed our transgressions from us. Jesus cares for every soul, even yours and mine, so you and I won't be alone in heaven. In fact, or instead, there we will see a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. Isaiah describes how we will feel when you'll see all these people come to the glory of Christ's light. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. That joy is ours because Jesus fills our hearts with his light, a light which overflows from, from our hearts, which overflows from our lips to every soul. Just think about this for a moment. Have you ever considered how many opportunities we have to do world mission work right here at home? We live in a world getting smaller and smaller every day because of technology. <coughs> Our community, we live in communities growing more culturally diverse every day. God is bringing the world right here to us in America, and he's opening possibilities for the gospel to go to places it's never been. Mission work to people of every culture is happening everywhere, even here. Now, the Lord has blessed our work to those from other nations and other places and other regions. In fact, just this past week, I received news from one of our sister congregations in New Jersey about the possibility of doing outreach to Korean families in Watertown. The Lord is opening up possibilities to us. Today we encounter more people from more nations and cultures than ever before as our neighborhoods and our communities change. <coughs> Should that scare us? Should you hesitate to welcome your new neighbor from Eastern Europe or the Middle East or Asia or Latin America or the city or some other region of the country? Should you hesitate to share the light of Christ with people who desperately, who are desperately lost in the thick darkness of unbelief? People may look different, have different customs, foods, background, or social status, but all of them, every single one, are souls for whom the light of the world has come. Souls just like yours and mine. Souls that desperately need His glorious, life-giving light to shatter their darkness. God, in His grace, shared His light with us. Now He gives us, you and me, the opportunity to share His light with the world here at home. And by supporting also that work in our country and around our world. What a glorious day that's going to be when the Son of Righteousness finally shatters all the darkness of our world. <laughs> All those dark clouds and comes with his glorious light. In the, in the meantime, he has work for us to do. Even when it's cold outside, he has work for us to do. Souls are dying in darkness of unbelief right now. And the Lord has 
given us they, they, the light that they desperately need, the, the light which we have to share. My prayer for you then, today and in the weeks and months and years to come, may God bless you as you let His light shine through you to the world. Amen.